Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. 3 Creepy Stories. Part 109. <laughs> Story 1. Calling all the monsters. Hello. I am writing this because I am terrified and don't know what to do, my family thinks I'm crazy and my girlfriend dumped me but I know I'm not crazy. I saw something, something I don't think it wants me to repeat, but I have a feeling I won't be here much longer either way. So here it goes. Ever since I was a child. I felt like I had some sort of crazy connection to animals. Like they just understood me. When I was 10 my babysitter took me to the zoo, it was just about the best day of my life. She bought me a hat with an orangutan on it that I still have hanging on my wall to this day, we got slurpees, the whole nine yards. But everything took a turn for the worse once we got to the giraffe exhibit. Something was off about this exhibit, there was only one lone giraffe standing in a dark lonely corner, it was staring at me, menacingly. I became engrossed with observing the creature. My babysitter's mama bear senses went off, or something like that, I guess. Jeffrey, come on, it's time to go. But I wouldn't move. She tried to nudge me along. Jeffrey, I'm not gonna tell you again. She tried to physically move me, but I was glued to the window. I had become catatonic. The paramedics eventually came, and I was banned from the zoo. That was 25 years ago now. Ever since that fateful day, I would constantly have recurring nightmares of that giraffe. His eyes looked human and were bloodshot red, it was like he had taken the fattest dab anyone has ever taken. It just stood there, frozen and would begin to open its mouth extremely wide. It would scream sounds no human or animal could ever make. Sometimes I would go months without the dream. I would think hey, I can finally get my life back on track. But that thinking would just make it worse. Until a couple nights ago, I had a dream I slayed the beast. It was so intense and magnificent, when I woke up, it seems I'd had a bit of a wet dream. It was just that good. I guess that didn't make the giraffe happy though. The next night, I heard something rustling outside my window. I got up to check what it was, and there was the beast, same bloodshot eyes and all. I guess the dream was here again, and I wanted that sensation of killing the beast. But when I opened the window, and stared into its hideous eyes, I was certain this had to be reality. I slapped myself so hard and told myself wake up, however, I wasn't waking up. I couldn't come to terms with the fact that this was really happening, I mean it couldn't possibly be. Why was this giraffe after me? Before I could finish the thought, blood was shed. The giraffe took a nab at me, and clipped my shoulder. Shit. I yelled. Then I woke up. Oh, it was just a dream. Thank God. I thought to myself. My eyes adjusted and my room looked rather peculiar. What's all this greenery, I thought. I shrugged it off, my mom was always planting things at late hours of the night, she must have stopped by to give me a little holiday cheer, right? My shoulder felt fine now, but I has a weird bodily sensation. Almost as if my neck was 4x its regular size, I was about to raise my hands to rub my eyes, but they wouldn't lift over my long neck. I looked down. That's when I knew something wasn't right. Why am I furry, and what's all these brown spots doing on me? Oh well I said to myself, it was probably just a bad case of the Mondays. Suddenly I heard a faint noise in the distance. The faint noise became louder and I could finally understand it to be one word being repeated over and over. Melman. Melman, were the words being said, I was confused. I thought to myself who or what is Melman. Suddenly the green fields faded away and turned into what appeared to be a hospital room and I was in the hospital bed. Oh Melman, an angelic voice said. I turned to my side and saw a huge, beautiful, plump hippo right next to me. Melman it's me Gloria your girlfriend. You've been in a coma for 25 years. 
Story 2. Lumpy Larry's Sin. Hi, my name is Ronnie and I have to tell you about my my brother, Larry. He's my vestigial twin. I call him Lumpy Larry. He's not conscious or anything, but he has a tooth and sometimes he burps. I always lie and say I farted. People tell me my farts sound weird. I guess that's how I got my nickname, Raspberry Ronnie. I'm 18, 6'4", light red hair, I hate the word ginger, and I wear thin, wire frame glasses. I'm pretty overweight, 275 pounds on a good day, but that's intentional. You see, Lumpy Larry is located on my lower right abdomen, just above my belt line, thankfully. When I was at a normal weight, Lumpy Larry would protrude into my shirt, and on occasion his tooth could be seen stretching the fabric. Due to his proximity to my groin I'll leave it to you to imagine the kind of taunts I received from my cruel little classmates. I figured I'd rather be the fat kid than the freak slash perv. As I said, Lumpy Larry isn't conscious. Really, he's just a large, smooth bump, like an oversized pimple. He has an irregularly shaped mouth that sort of funnels down to God knows where. I have no idea what his mouth is connected to and frankly I never want to know but whatever it is, it's nasty. His burps smell atrocious. Like rotting eggs in a hot car. You can smell me before you see me, I am constantly enveloped in a cloud of Axe body spray. Sometimes the smell of Larry's burps escapes my shirt though and trust me, if it happens you'll know. If you don't immediately lose your lunch you might catch a glimpse of me sprinting into the bathroom to douse myself in more perfume. You might ask why I never had my brother surgically removed and well, the answer is complicated. My dad left before I was born. All I know about him is that he had some sort of act he performed in the carnival he traveled with. I've never met him, don't even know his name. My mom fell heavily into religious fundamentalism after he left so we're a strict pro-life family. I was raised to love the Lord. The Bible is the literal word of God and I am his servant. My mom is prominent in our church community. She leads the weekly Bible study, essentially the preacher's number one fan, and handles the church's finances. She loves the power. Seriously, I sometimes wonder what she would do if she ever lost it. That's why she's always so strict with me. It's important to keep up appearances, well at least as much as you can while living in a dumpy trailer park like ours. Despite our degenerate neighbors and poverty, we maintained a tidy home and ate well enough. So if you think keeping Larry is unscientific or medically hazardous or ugly or whatever it is, I don't care. It doesn't matter what any of you say, Lumpy Larry is my brother, I love him, and I will always protect him, which is why I have to warn you. As a budding teen I have, of course, developed the normal natural urges one develops as they navigate puberty. My mother made sure to educate me on the ways to control my body so I don't do anything that would jeopardize my salvation and put my soul at risk of eternal damnation. Well, it seems recently Larry has them too, except I can't do anything to control him. It's weird. What I mean is, I'm attracted to women but it seems Larry is attracted to scrambled eggs. Whenever he gets near them his smooth, shiny skin starts wobbling like a jello mold until a small yellow luji drips off his tooth, into the eggs. He usually belches quite a bit while doing it too. Afterwards he jiggles for another minute or so before going silent for the rest of the day. Honestly, it was kind of a relief at first, not having to constantly be on guard for the unrelenting, randomized barf bombs ejected from his overactive, little mouth. Unfortunately, that sense of relief is not worth the price. My mother, being the strict disciplinarian she is, forces me to work as much as possible. Real men must have a real work ethic. Consequently, I have been a dedicated Waffle House employee since I was 14. The problem is I just can't control Lumpy Larry's new urges. When he gets them it's like I lose control of my body until he's finished. I can't bring the food back to the kitchen without getting fired and risk incurring my mother's holy wrath so I serve it. 
I think that's what Larry wants because it's been happening every day now. Not only that, it's getting worse. What typically happens is some unfortunate soul orders scrambled eggs, and by the time I place the order with the cook, Lumpy Larry begins his jiggling. I don't know how he hears the order but his jiggling only gets progressively more intense, reaching a crescendo as the cook hands me the plate of eggs. At this point, it's like Larry somehow takes over. My left hand holds the plate low just above the counter, while my right hand flies to my shirt, frantically untucking the fabric covering Lumpy Larry. I lean over slightly as Larry completes his vile deed, aiming his tooth toward the eggs until the logis is completely expelled. You would never know what had happened, his logis blends right in. It's the same exact shade of yellow and has the consistency of runny yolk. For some odd reason, people never complain. Not once has someone sent back their food after Larry has had his way with it. In fact, some go out of their way to compliment the chef. We're one of the most popular waffle houses in the area. I've never dared to try it because, eww, gross, but I can't lie and say I'm not curious. Now initially I hadn't considered the possibility that Larry's new behavior might be reproductive in nature. At first I suspected he had come down with a cold or something. Then yesterday happened. I remembered her from last week, Chloe Wilton. She was one of the first people Larry fed his love Luigi to. Real nice lady. I didn't know her well but she kept a big vegetable garden and would sell her produce at a cute little homemade stand every weekend. Just after coming on shift, the local sheriff, who had been seated at the counter before I arrived, received an alarming call over his radio. I don't remember it exactly because I was so shocked by what I heard, but here's my best recollection, note, we're a small town so the police are pretty casual on the radio. John. Come in John. John. Jesus Bob, calm down you sound like you got the Unabomber cornered. Take a deep breath and tell me what's going on. Pause. John, you have, you, you have to get over to 4269 Spring Street immediately. I think. I think we need to call the CDC. I was instantly unnerved. I knew that whatever horrible thing was happening at Chloe's house was because of Larry's bad behavior. Unfortunately, the officer bolted out the door before I could gather any other information. I didn't learn of the details until this morning. It seems that since dining on Lumpy Larry's sex spittle Chloe began experiencing some alarming physical symptoms. Within 24 hours she was complaining about the worst migraines imaginable. Apparently they would come and go every hour or so, the pain growing so intense it caused her to projectile vomit a viscous, yellow liquid that sounded frighteningly similar to Lumpy Larry's own produce. There's rumors going around that she had a weird hole in her abdomen. Thankfully those have been mostly dismissed as crackpot nonsense. All I know now is that they found her with a gunshot wound to the head, a .45 revolver in her right hand, and yellow, viscous liquid dripping down the nearby walls. The officer who discovered her body is now complaining of migraines despite having no history of them. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for Larry's soul. Premarital sex is a sin. If I'm honest, I'm slightly afraid that God will punish me alongside Larry. We are brothers after all and I am my brother's keeper. My mom taught me that and I truly believe it. I'm torn between my love for my brother and my love for the Lord. But it doesn't matter. I couldn't stop Larry even if I wanted to. I can feel his urges now. Let me be clear, I am not attracted to scrambled eggs. I'm just saying I can feel what Larry feels when he sees the eggs, and we should all be scared. It's primal, preternatural, predatory, like it's the only thing he was created to do. The urges are getting more intense and more frequent. This morning Larry did the deed twice. That's a first. I think it's just going to pick up now and I don't know what to do. I can't kill myself or my brother without going straight to hell. I can't stop working without being thrown out on my ass and dying in poverty. The only jobs I've ever had are food service as, due to my religious upbringing, 
I have no formal education. I certainly can't tell anyone I know about this and I absolutely cannot tell my mother about this. That's why I'm telling you, internet strangers. If I can't stop him then the only way to prevent this from getting worse is to warn the public. Hear me, if you ever get served by a fat, nerdy redhead with unusual flatulence, don't order the eggs. Honestly, I don't know what the future holds. My mother just took a new job in a major metro area and we will be moving soon. Our pastor has close connections with a local church there so my mom will be able to keep the same power she has here. They have waffle houses there too so I will just transfer restaurants. And if you think you can avoid Larry by avoiding waffle houses I have to tell you that I often moonlight at various diners for the extra money. Really never know where I might be working if you're in the same city as me, which for the safety of my brother, I will not divulge. Frankly, if I were you, I would never eat eggs again. Story 3. The Plum. Read narrator in English accent, not American. So, last night I had Taco Bell. Spicy chalupa to be exact with a Baja Blast. Now, my stomach has never been the best and I usually don't eat Taco Bell. But this spicy was the worst I've ever experienced in my entire life. Clenching my cheeks so hard so I don't shit my trousers as I rush to my bathroom. I open the toilet, throwing my jeans down as shit starts to come out of my asshole. I will spare the details of how raw my hole was but once I was emptied and felt better, I went to flush but it didn't go down. Sometimes I have plumbing problems but never like this. My shit just couldn't go down no matter how hard I tried it just wouldn't flush. So I had no choice but to call a plumber. Fat Boy Plumbing Services, how may we help you? Hey uh, my toilet won't flush. I've tried everything I could and I just don't want to take anything apart without it being looked at. We will send someone to check right away sir, please just give us your address. So I gave them my address and heard a bunch of yelling and panic but I guess it could have been busy today. Maybe the whole city's plumbing wasn't doing well. But at the same time, it seemed skeptical. Though maybe it's just because I live alone that I think crazy things. But soon enough they showed, or at least one guy did. He was stocky, long arms and legs, and very little hair, but the most remarkable thing was his abnormally wide or big mouth. His smile literally went from ear to ear whenever he would laugh. Alright, so there's been a street-wide plumbing issue and we know what the issue is. Unfortunately, we have to go under the house and fix the problem. So I'm not surprised you didn't call earlier. He started writing on his little clipboard. How much do you think this all will cost? Or do you not know what the exact problem is? Well, I believe this will be free as it's this whole street so the city should cover it. He then smiled very widely. It was unsettling. He then walked out of the house as if he knew how to get to my plumbing so I wasn't too worried about it. I decided to sit in my living room until he came to tell me what was wrong and give me the rundown. So I waited, watching some scary stories while working on a few documents for my job. At some point, I realized it was starting to get kind of late, but I decided to wait since it could have been quite invasive and may just take a while. So I waited. And waited and waited some more. But he simply never came back in. It was dark now and I got up, turned the porch light on, and went outside. His truck was gone. He was just completely gone. I was dumbfounded, had he just left without bothering to tell me the problem? I didn't expect him to just up and disappear but I assumed he had nothing important to tell me so he just left. After that I went on with my night, as usual, I put a hot pocket in the microwave, washed some dishes, fished up my paperwork, and before I knew it, it was already 12.30 am. Damn, I need to get to bed. I thought out loud. As I walked to my bedroom, I passed my bathroom and I got a strange feeling like something wasn't right, but I just brushed it off and went to bed, however, I couldn't sleep, 
Every time I closed my eyes all I could see was that plumber's eerie grin. After a bit, I finally started to drift off into sweet slumber but just as the Sandman came to take me off to dreamland my stomach started to grumble. And I knew that I needed to shit. I jolted up, dripping in a cold sweat, and before I could even think I ran to the bathroom. Shit, that hot pocket went right through me. I said as I sat down on my cold porcelain throne. Again I'll spare you the detail of my gruesome shits, but just know that it left my asshole in shambles. After I was done I slowly reached for the handle hoping that the strange plumber had got it to work again. And he did, it did flush, and to be frank with you that was the best I had ever seen it flush in my whole 10 years of living in this house, but despite it flushing like a king's toilet I couldn't help but notice that the sound that a toilet usually makes went from sounding like phwush to more of a sucking sound like sluyuyuk as if someone was using a straw. It was so strange to hear this noise from my toilet, but I assumed it was just the new plumbing system. I walked straight back to my room and slipped into my bed like that dookie slipped out of my ass. My tummy settled and I was finally able to drift off into sleep. The next morning I was awoken by the piercing beep 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 sound of my alarm clock letting me know that it was time to start my day. I got up, got dressed, and headed to my kitchen to feed my cat, Poopsy, and then feed myself. After I fed Poopsy I walked over to the fridge to see what I could eat. Hmm, eggs. No, I don't have any. Pancakes. No, I don't have any, hmm, cereal it is then. I said as I grabbed the milk. I opened the cabinet and got out some lucky charms and poured it into a bowl, just like my shit poured into the toilet bowl. When I was done eating I realized it was time to work, I work from home so I opened my computer and got busy. I worked for around 15 minutes before I felt the familiar movement of my bowels letting me know I once again needed to release the beast into its porcelain prison. I walked into the bathroom, turned on the lights, and sat down, but as I was letting the brown down I started to hear what I thought was whispering. Where the hell is that coming from? I asked myself as I looked around the room, but I just brushed it off and turned on some Harry Styles to drown the whispers out. But the whispers were not a one-off thing and neither was the new flushing sound, every time I used the bathroom from that point on I would hear the whispering sound, and the sluyupt, but it wasn't something a little Harry Styles couldn't fix, well until about a week ago that is, see last Wednesday night was a special night, I got invited to a work party at a local bar and despite knowing alcohol make my tummy extra upsetty spaghetti I didn't want to miss out on meeting my co-workers in person for the first time. So I agreed to go, I honestly don't know what went wrong, I only had 15 white claws but by the end of that night I was nearly soiling my bridges in the back of a taxi, and I don't know about you but pooping your pants in the back of a taxi while drunk is not how I wanna spend my Wednesday night. Luckily I was able to just make it home and to the bathroom in time, but after I was done I could've sworn that I heard giggling coming from inside the toilet. I stopped all my movements and listened intently. The noises went on for a couple of seconds then suddenly stopped. I couldn't make out any of the whispers but I just knew this had to do with the plumbing company. So I decided to call them. Hello, thank you for calling Fat Bois Plumbing, how may we help you today? Hi um I had you guys come over a couple of nights ago and I noticed that the plumber that came by never came to tell me anything about the problem. And now I just hear what sounded like. Giggling. And whispers coming from my toilet after I had taken a shit. I'm sorry to hear that sir. A-H-E-S-C-A-L-L-I-N-G-A-B-O-U-T-S-T-E-V-I-E. I I am sorry, what? The. Fuck. I said sometimes our plumbers will sometimes leave if the issue isn't severe after fixing it. Hearing voices and whispers may be cause for the police or your own investigation. Sorry we can't help you further but if you have any plumbing questions, you know who to call. Oh ah uh, thanks, will do. Boop. Sigh. 
I guess I'll check it out myself. I shoved my bedroom door open and rummaged through my nightstand drawer that held the key to under my house. I pushed items aside, but I couldn't find it though. So I pulled the whole drawer out and dumped it on my bed. No key. Fuck. What the hell happened to it? In defeat, I decided I would just go check the latch. The plumber was able to get in so he probably left it down there. So I trudged down the stairs and out of the house. I noticed there was a fat bois plumbing truck at my neighbor's house. How weird I thought to myself. I continued my journey to the side of my house and saw the little door was open and there was no longer a lock there. I swore I put a lock on it. Shaking my head, I pulled my phone out and turned the flashlight onto the highest level. Pushing the door open I noticed a little light coming from where the pipes were. So I slowly got underneath the house and kind of crouched down so as to not hit my head. Then I saw him. The plumber who had inspected my pipes earlier this week. He didn't notice me but his mouth. It was around a pipe, almost like it was gripped on it. It was my, toilet pipe. I quickly turned around and suddenly a great force hit me in the head. Falling to the floor, my mind started to shut down and all I could see was a blob of a person standing over me. Then nothing. After what I assume was anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes I started to regain consciousness. I lifted my head up and looked around to assess my surroundings, my head pounding in pain. I realized that I was still in the basement area and then I remembered why I was here, the plumber, the image of his tall skinny body standing by the pipes as his mouth latched around the toilet pipe soon plagued my mind, but before I could dwell on that thought any longer I saw something emerging from out of the shadows, it was the plumber. I quickly tried to stand up and run away but soon realized that I was tied to one of the pipes. Oh diddly darn fuck. I said as the plumber came closer and closer to me until he was mere inches away from my face, his hot shitty breath piercing my nostrils. H-E-L-L-O-J-O-S-H-U-A he said as his mouth twisted into a sharp grin. W-A what do you want with me? I-W-A-N-T-Y-O-U-R-P-O-O-P comma J-O-S-H-U-A. W-A what? Y-O-U-H-E-A-R-M-E-R-I-G-H-T comma J-O-S-H-U-A. Why? At this point, I was more confused than scared. At this point, I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know what this shit sucker was going to do either. I was terrified and so confused. The more I thought about it, it made me kind of laugh. Like, who would believe there was a demon who survived on human feces? I let out a soft chuckle which made my head pound even worse. But the plumber looked at me, distraught as to why I was laughing. Then my stomach made the most ungodly gurgle of its entire life. It sounded like I was gonna shit the most unheavenly dump truck of a load in my pants. Stevie looked into my eyes, his lips curling into the most demonically wide smile. My heart raced as my cheeks clenched so hard I thought I'd pull a muscle. I tried to move my hands to my butthole as he started his trudge towards me, crouching down more as he got closer. W wait wait. I was sweating so profusely and I focused on not shitting myself. If you take me to my toilet right now I won't tell anyone. I I L L just pretend I didn't know you ate shit in the first place. It can be like the old times. He <laughs> he. His smile slightly dropped but then he spoke deeper than before. O N E W E E K J O S H I E dot I F Y O U S T O P P O O P I N G I W I L L F I N D Y O U dot I F Y O U T E L L A N Y O N E comma I W I L L F I N D O U T dot I W I L L E A T Y O U R B O W E L S A N D T H R O W Y O U D E E P D E E P D O W N dot He then untied my arms and sent me outside. I clasped my hands on my ass in case I shit my trousers. The bathroom was maybe 50 feet away. I got this. I thought to myself. Then once my urge to shit passed for a moment, I booked it up my front steps and zoomed through the living room to my bathroom. Tearing my pants off, shit started spraying out of my hole like a fire hose. Soon after, my tummy stopped rumbling and I was empty once again. 
I flushed and heard the man go slow to chirp pep pep then washed my hands. I slapped myself down on my couch and fell asleep. Soon I woke up to my couch being tossed around like it was in a truck. Upon opening my eyes, I realized I wasn't in my house. As I scanned my surroundings I quickly realized I was in a plumbing truck. I looked to see who the driver was. My heart sank into my ball sack as I realized it was Stevie. Pushing myself up, I felt pressure on my ankles, soon seeing I was chained. Heavily breathing, I tried to confront him. Stevie. I thought we were cool man. But it came out so timid and soft. Not good. He cleared his throat quickly. I'm sorry man. I couldn't risk getting caught for letting you off the hook. I tried banging on the windows but noticed there weren't any. It was pure metal. Please, man. Let me out. I swear I won't say a single thing ever. About you or anything you told me. I see A.N.T. Joshua. I have to take you down below. Now Z-I-P-I-T-O-R-I-T-W-I-L-L-B-E-M-U-C-H-W-O-R-S-E-F-R-O-M-H-E-R-E dot. Sighing, I sat back rethinking everything I'd ever done. Wondering where he's gonna take me. We then drove for around an hour and a half before I felt the truck come to a halt. Stevie unbuckled himself and disappeared behind the slides of the truck, then I soon heard a click from the double doors, and was met by glimmering moonlight that reflected off Stevie's bald head, as he then unchained me. Get out, boy ha. He said as he started his way down a ladder. I looked around the vehicle doors for an escape but to no avail. There was a fence in every direction. H-U-R-R-Y-U-P, Stevie said, presumably already at the bottom of the ladder. So I crawled out so as to not get into any more trouble with the big man. I wonder if I should trust Stevie and follow him into what is most likely my demise. So I bit the bullet and traversed down the rusty ladder into the sewer. And observed my surroundings. A sewer. I whispered under my breath. Yeah no shit Einstein, well in your case there is a lot of shit, but anyway, follow me. He led me down a brown rusty corridor that had piss all over the floor, making it super sticky. He opened a door at the end and there was a circle of people who sounded like they were beatboxing. I stared in horror, looking at my fate which was presumably sacrifice. W.A. what are you going to do to me? I said in a cowardly voice, my hands trembling. You sweat dripped down my ass crack like tears dripped down my face. Shta Stevie, isn't there another way? You ha I'm sorry Joshua, this is the only way. My nerves dropped into my stomach making it very upset it. Then all of a sudden all the other plumbers started to gather around me, still chanting. I didn't know what to do, and I began to panic causing me to hyperventilate. My head started to feel dizzy and my vision started to darken as I passed the fuck out. When I finally came to I was lightheaded as shit balls bismillah I said as I realized I was hanging upside down, shit dripping wait no, this was something else, this was much lighter than the stuff that usually secreted from my raw hole, no this was wetter than wet, it was piss. A-U-H haza. I shouted, I haven't pissed in 10 years. I yelled, but then I remembered my situation and was brought back to reality. I looked around and saw I was farther from the ground than I'd like as the plumbers stared at me with their disgusting smiles. I realized there was machinery near me as if to extract my poop from me or something. Then I heard a sucking sound, much more aggressive than it was back at my house, and when I looked to see who it was, I saw that it wasn't just Stevie anymore, it was around 11 plumbers sucking my bowel juice. There was so much pressure pulling at my hole that I felt I would never shit again. Then more pressure came from inside me. And before I knew it I saw my insides fly out of my now bleeding hole, or whatever is left of it. Then it started to go dark. As the room started to become dark I could see Stevie standing under me looking up into my eyes, he then said something to me but the sucking was so loud I couldn't hear it, but it looked like he said we are the plum. Finn. Javiza haiku. Shit came out his ass. 
The shit came super fast. The poop to my cock. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.